to part three of this lace front to series if you have not already make sure you check out part one on how to bleach your frontal and customize your hairline as well as part two i showed you guys how to slay your color every single time without ruining your frontal so make sure you guys check that out so part three i'm gonna show y'all how to construct a bomb wig so let's get into it conference of your head and mine is 21 inches as you guys can see the next measurement is ear to ear and mine is 11 inches this is the cap that i'm using this is my favorite cap for you know little heads like myself if you have a larger head then you want to go ahead and get a dome cap okay so i'm gonna show you all two different ways you can do this the first way you can measure out your frontal and as i just told you guys my ear to ear is 11 inches so i will place my measuring tape in the middle of the frontal and i'm gonna show you guys the 11 inches so there's the 11 inches and i will cut off the access but since your frontal stretches i would do 10 and a half instead of 11 because it does stretch when you place it on the cap so you just cut those edges off now the second way i got this from sophiology and this tip is so bomb y'all like my frontals fits perfectly doing this so you want to place the cap on your head and i just braided my frontal up to get the hair out of the way so you're going to align your frontal on your head and the cap on how you would want it like when you put it on so what you're going to do is take a white pencil i just have a white little eyeliner that was a dollar at the beauty supply store and you're going to mark the areas on like behind your ear on both sides and then in the middle of the cap where it stops so you know exactly where to sew it okay so y'all see where my dots are on my cap and let me show you how bomb this trick is so i told you guys to go to ten and a half because the frontal stretches right so check this out i'm gonna put my measuring tape on there look where those dots line up on my measuring tape 10 and a half sis like this trick is foolproof like your frontals are gonna lay on your head perfectly 10 and a half y'all see that y'all see it okay yeah all right you guys so i have 15 needles pre-threaded with nylon thread i do not use cotton thread i feel like the more needles you have the better you guys i did not have to stop and re-thread needles i had two left over actually so i'm gonna show you guys my t-pins this is my favorite t-pin i like to use i got a bag of them for 2.99 that one that has the opening i do not like it the end of it is super thick you guys can see it's thicker than the one i just showed you and it's really hard to pierce through your weft, so I don't like that T-pin at all. So if you can, try to get the other one. So I have my 21-inch canvas block head, you guys. They come in all different sizes, and I'm showing you guys that that lump is indicating that that is the back of the cap. I like to line up those two lines that go into a V-shape with the 21 on my cap. And now I'm going to take my frontal and line it up to the markings that we made. So the front part of your frontal is gonna look weird. It's not gonna be sitting flat down on the cap or anything. That's what it's supposed to look like. As long as that back part is flat down, you are good to go. So sew through the fabric of that elastic band. That's what I'm showing you guys right there. That right there is sewing through the elastic. You just wanna sew through the top layer of the fabric. So I'm gonna stick my needle through the fabric and the back of the frontal. And once I pull my needle all the way through, I'm sticking it in between the thread, separating it, sticking it in between, and then I'm gonna pull it. That creates a knot. So to secure that, I'm gonna go behind what I just did and wrap my needle around my thread four times to create another knot. I like to knot the edge like a lot of times to make sure that it's secure. So I do the loop and stitch or the loop and pull, the blanket stitch, whatever you want to call it. And I pretty much just hold my thread in front of me so that my needle goes through the thread every time. Do 
doing your stitches this way, make sure that everything is nice and secure. I definitely think this is more secure than just regularly sewing your tracks. Um, this, like I haven't had any tracks slip or anything like that doing this method. So like I said, make sure that your thread is always in the front of you or on top of your needle so that your needle goes through the thread, like in between it, if that makes any sense. I'm sure you guys can see it better than I can explain it. Just want to keep on doing this stitch across the whole entire back portion of your frontal and I'm going to show you guys in a second do not sew on these lines right there those two lines that go straight back also have elastic and they also help your cap stretch so do not sew on those I sew on the sides of them without touching any of that portion that I'm showing you guys right here so don't sew through it just sew on the sides of it and I'm on the other side I'm gonna make four loops to um, secure this off and then cut that thread off and as you guys can see those flaps are hanging off because I'm gonna have to cut that when I um, install my wig so here are my bundles like I said check out part two to see how I colored it and I'm gonna stick my needle through the weft I always do this at the beginning and the end of sewing my wefts onto my cap so again I'm going through the fabric not the elastic Once you do that, go ahead and T-pin the other side of the track to the other side so you don't have to hold it. And then I make four loops behind that initial stitch to just secure. I just, like I have OCD about securing the ends of the tracks and frontals and stuff. So I just like to do that to make sure everything is secure. And I just really tack down those edges really, really good. Again, make sure you guys are only sewing through the fabric. And as you guys can see, I'm sewing through like the bottom part of the fabric. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what this does. This makes sure that you can put your wig into a ponytail. Okay, so I'm at the end of the track and I'm going to do the fold over method and I did single with this entire wig. If you double your tracks, um, then honestly, I would suggest just sealing them and cutting them. Uh, doubling the weft just makes it a little bit bulky even with the fold over method in my opinion so I like to fold it down like press it down with my thumb to make sure it's down nice and flat and then I do go through the weft and do the fold over method so I make a loop four times around the needle and then I just go behind it and continue on sewing as I was doing so I'm gonna just let you guys watch this that fold over method again going through the weft making four loops to make sure it's secure and folding the weft over make sure that you're taking your needle through the back of that frontal as well to make sure that your track is like going like into the frontal as you guys can see that right there you can see it better than I can explain it so yeah just make sure that it's like attached to the front so you don't want like any gapping but you don't want it to be bulky so I just pretty much went back and forth from frontal to frontal until I could not do that anymore and I'm going to show you guys once I get to that point I'm going to start to lay my tracks horizontally across all right so I'm showing you guys right here you cannot see any tracks 
I do not lay my tracks like directly on top of each other. I give it a little bit of spacing as you can see. So right here I ran out of um, track. That was my first bundle I believe. So I'm starting with the second and I just like married these tracks together. I stuck the needle through that second bundle and just like connected it to the end of that first track. And then I made four loops around and just connected them together. So that's what I like to do to make sure that it's secure. So I'm just showing you guys, I connected that again and made four loops. And then you guys can kind of see the spacing right there. That's how much space I like to put in between the tracks because if you stack them too close together, your wig will look bulky. So just give it a little bit of space. Okay guys, so this is what I was talking about. As you can see, I can no longer keep going frontal to frontal. So I'm going to start to lay my tracks horizontally. And I am going to be cutting these wefts. So any wefts that I did horizontally at this point, I cut. Everything else was the fold over method. Okay guys, so my SD card ran out of space, but I did manage to clear enough space to show you guys this last track. So it is connected to the edge of my frontal. That is what you want. You don't want any space between there. And all you have to do is take a little sliver of hair from your frontal to cover up this last track. But I did the exact same thing throughout the entire video, blanket stitch. I just made sure that it was connected to the edge of my frontal. Okay y'all, so like I said, my SD card kept running out of space, so I just quickly wanted to show you how to cut that excess cap from um, up under your frontal, and I just like to save that piece to use as an elastic band. This is much healthier for your hair versus the elastic band that you can get from Walmart or Joann's because it's a super hard um, texture. So you just wanna sew that behind like the little ear flaps on both sides. This is all it is to making your wig, you guys. Share this video, tell everybody you know to come subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Leave me some comments down below or what you want to see next, and I'll catch y'all in my next one.